night. Morning, sir. How are you? Fine, sir. Okay, so today we are going to learn about group 70. Group 70. Going down the group, the atomic size increases. Thus, the oxidizing strength decreases. Oxidation reaction between hydrogen with iron chloride solution will oxidize the green iron into brown iron. The majority of group 17 in water are decreasing down the group. Down the group. Do you guys understand? Yes. So that's all for today. Thank you. Thanks. Let's go. Andy. Andy. Hey, Seth. Hi. So what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. Andy, if there is nothing wrong with you, then you shouldn't be behaving like this, you know. The thing is, Amina, I don't actually understand what the lecturer taught me just now. What don't you understand? I don't have proper understanding on group 17 actually. We can help you with this, Andy. Really? Yeah, yeah sure. we can do this. Let's go somewhere else where we can properly discuss this. Okay. <laughs> So, Andy, what did you understand about elements in group 17? I don't understand on the electronegativity of group 17. Can you explain more on that? Electronegativity is the tendency for an atom to take one electron from another atom. A better way to explain this is through an analogy. I'll use my siblings as an example. We used to be thieves once upon a time. Here comes my youngest sister. She's the smallest sibling, just like fluorine, which is the smallest element of group 17. She can steal things the easiest, just like fluorine, which can take electrons easier due to having the highest electronegativity. Next, my other sister. She represents chlorine. As chlorine is larger in size than fluorine, her electronegativity is weaker Hence, it is a little bit harder for her to take electrons. Here is my eldest sister. She represents bromine. Bromine is even larger than both fluorine and chlorine, which means her electronegativity is even weaker. She will have an even harder time to take electrons. And that's me, representing iodine, larger than all of the previous elements. Having the weakest electronegativity, it's much more harder for me to take electrons. Ah, now I understand. And how about the atomic radius of the elements in group 17? Can anyone explain that? I know, let's use this onion to explain the atomic radius. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. So, let's say this layer of onion represents the energy level of an element. So, going down the group, the number of shells of an element increase as the number of electrons increase. So this two layer of onion 
represent the two shells of fluorine. So basically, this is fluorine. And as we go down the group, the number of shells increase, which now represents chlorine. So you can see the size is bigger than fluorine just now. So as we add in more shells, now it has four shells, it represents bromine and the size is even bigger. And when the fifth shell is added, which is now five shells, it represents iodine and it has the biggest size. Ah, now I see. Thanks, Amina, and your onions. Sure thing. And how about the physical properties of group 17? I can handle this. As we know, group 17 is the only group that have three states of matter. Allow me to explain this by using water as an analogy. So, water can be a solid which is ice. The same goes for the two elements in group 17, iodine and astatine, which are a solid at room temperature due to their high melting point. Next, water can also be a liquid. Bromine has the same physical state as water at room temperature, which is liquid because its melting point is below room temperature. So, the last physical state is gas. Because of low boiling point, fluorine and chlorine exist as gas at room temperature. Oh, now I understand. Thank you guys for helping me. No problem, Andy.